Hey everybody, this is Bruce from Bruce's Antique Toy Corner again. Um, I've got some different stuff today. I'm going to go a little different with my movie, with my filming today. Um, instead of doing metals, I'm going to do plastics. And the reason I'm doing plastics is I kind of overlooked his toys. I mean, they are and they aren't, but everybody likes metal more than they like plastic. But the thing is, I don't only limit my collecting to uh, metal toys. Um, I like a lot of a lot of these plastics that I picked up are from the 1950s. Some a little later, some a little newer. Um, but I'm going to show you some of them, and the, the table's kind of full, so I'll just take them down as I go and set stuff on the floor, so I can get to everything. You can't see everything in the picture because it, it it's not open enough to see it all. But I'll show them to you one at a time, from the smallest to the biggest, give you a little idea what I got. This first one is a um, toy earth mover and it's made by Banner and it was made in the 50s sometime and it's in pretty good shape you can see somebody drew US on it um, it's dark green it's kind of small I got it in a box of stuff I got from that online auction that I'm always talking about the nice part about that auction is you can go and see these things before you bid on them because it's not very far from where I live so a lot of times when I see boxes of old vintage toys, some of this stuff comes into it. You know, you can see it's got the hard wheels on it. But this is from like the mid to late 50s right here. It's from a, Banner, a place called Banner Toy Company. The next one I got is a plastic 60 series Cadillac. And I couldn't find, if you look and stuff underneath it, there's nothing, it doesn't have a, any kind of marks to let you know who made the thing. I'm assuming it was from some kind of playset or something. And I got this out of an antique shop for like a couple dollars. And I just thought it was cool because it's a, it's a 60 series Cadillac made out of plastic. Probably from the mid-60s sometime. Like I was saying before, I, I don't limit my... I really enjoy all these different kinds of toys and I don't limit my collecting only to metal. And my reasoning is that is if you do, and there's nothing wrong with collecting Tonkas and making your whole collection Tonkas or making a Buddy L or Marks or whatever you want. But if you if you pass by this stuff, you're missing out on a lot of really cool toys because, you know, metal's, metal's king of course, but um, these plastics are pretty neat too. The next one I have is an Auburn Mercedes Gullwing. And I'm going to do a whole section on Auburns because a lot of them aren't plastic. They're like rubber. And I'm thinking this one was built somewhere towards the end of their run of the Auburn Toy Company because it's made out of plastic. But otherwise, it's, it's, it's in pretty exceptional shape. It's, it's nice. And like I said, I got it in a box of different stuff. Um, I'm not even going to put any kind of value on these things because... When you get them in boxes, you know, you can look them up online. I think I've seen this this particular one going for maybe 6 or $7. But it's pretty nice shape. The next one I got is from a company called Renwall. And this, the car doesn't look very old, but this is actually in the mid-1950s. And it's in pretty good shape. This is a sedan. Um, it's not very big. It's maybe 3 4 inches long. And I got two of them um, at an uh, antique store. And I just thought they were kind of neat. This is the sedan. And the other one, this is exactly the same year, but this one's a coupe. And they're both in really good shape. I mean, I can get really close to the camera if you want to see them. But they're not scarred up. Not played with very much. In pretty good shape. And I like the Renwall company. I have, I have a few more things I'm going to show you in this video from Renwall that are quite a bit bigger. But uh, they're pretty nice cars. Um, this next one's a four-door sedan. This is a Renoir. And uh, I think this one here is a little bit uh, older than the ones I just showed you. It's got a little bit different style of wheels on. It's a little longer. It's in really good shape. Um, I think I plucked it off of a flea market table or something for maybe 2 or $3 dollars. You know, like I said, not a lot of monetary value. But then again, I don't collect toys for retirement. Um, where I work, I got a 401k. But I just enjoy these toys a lot. So when I find this older stuff, I'm, I'm definitely all over it. I think I might have paid a couple dollars for this. 
This other one's from the 1960s. It's a Jaguar, made in England. I couldn't really find a lot of information on it. All I could find out that it was made in England. I couldn't figure out. I couldn't kind of narrow it down to. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it says Jaguar England on it. Um, I couldn't find a lot of information about it, but you know, just just the fact that something from the mid '60s like this survived is pretty impressive. And I think I got this one in a box of stuff too. This next one is a, a Mark's race car. Oh, it's numbered. It says number seven. I, you know, I I just picked it up for a display piece. I didn't really look it over that close. Um, I rolled it over and I noticed that it was Mark's. And then I started to look it over, and it's from the 60, early 60s sometime, late 50s, early 60s. And as I rolled it over like this, I noticed it's a slot car. Because if you can see right here and right here, there's metal where those prongs and them slides came out. And this was actually a slot car. But I just purchased it. I think I paid like six bucks for it. It was sitting on a, at a um, flea market on a table. And I just thought it was cool because when I rolled it over, it said Marks, and it was in really good shape, and, and the guy's still in there. And I just I kind of thought it was neat. So there's a little one. It's a trolley car. It's Acme. It's from 1950. If you can see the wheels underneath it, you can see they're hard rubber wheels. It's a trolley car. It has a little bit of an extension off here that's broken, but like I said, this came in a box of stuff like them other things I was showing you. So, when, you know, usually when you buy the box, you got to take everything that's in it. And I seen something in the box that I wanted, so I bought the whole thing. And I think I only paid like $10, $11 from that auction. Like I said, you can go to this place where I go to this auction, and, and you can look at all this stuff before you even decide to make a bid on it. This next one's an Acme Texaco truck, mid 1950s. Um, you can see the hard we hard rubber wheels on it. You can clearly see the only thing wrong is it's missing this post right here. But that came in that box with all the other stuff, and I thought it was pretty cool. You know, I got a lot of these smalls. Um, I don't limit myself to collecting only big stuff. I like the small stuff too. But other than that, you know, for something as old as that to survive is pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. <clears throat> the next thing I got is a, this is a Mercedes-Benz race car, um, made in Hong Kong. I couldn't really find much information on it. I uh, got it off an online auction, um, the place I usually go, and I got it really cheap. I think it was only two or three dollars. But I thought it was kind of cool. It's got the original driver in it. Um, it's just, I don't know what year. I'm assuming it's sometime in the 70s if I had to take a guess. Because like I said, I couldn't find this particular car online. I could bring it up closer so you can see it. But the part that I liked about it was the guy was still in it. And, and I got it fairly reasonable. And that's what I like to do with these old plastics and stuff. You can get them cheap, pick them up. If you can't get them cheap, sometimes when you go into antique shops, they're just out of their mind on their prices. And you can buy a lot of that stuff offline a lot cheaper. But I got a really good deal on it, so I picked it up. I don't know if anybody collects, but this is Big Ed. He's a Tonka, Tonka figurine, and he goes in a Bronco. And I don't have the Bronco, but I, I got the Big Ed in the box, along with a couple other Army soldiers. And the only reason I bid on the box was because he was in it. I figured eventually I would get a get the Bronco that goes with it. It's like a place that you can change the tires on the Bronco and everything. But this is Big Ed. He's, he's from Tonka. Okay, another thing I got here... These are from the late 50s, early 60s, and what they are is they're Lionel Corporation cars, and they went on a car hauler for a train set. And I'm not really sure what the scale on the train set is, but I'm assuming it's a little bit bigger train, and there's four of these cars that come on a set. Well, I found these cars along the way, and uh, I just kind of thought they were neat. I got a real good deal on them. You can see they're hard rubber. They're late 50s, early 60s. I have a yellow one here. 
And then here's another one. This is a blue one. And I think they come in green and red. But they sit up on a Lionel train set car transport. But like I said, I like to collect small. So when I had a chance to buy them, and they're in great shape. I can get them up close to the camera if you want to take a look at them. They're not scarred or scraped or nothing. They got their windshield still in them. And they're in really good shape. I like, I like smalls. The next thing I got is this is a... It's a Marks, around 1960. It's actually a bank, and it's plastic, and you can see it's real bright on this side. And as you turn it around, you can see it's um, faded on this side. So I'm assuming it sat in a window or something, and it faded out one side of the truck. But the reason I bought this was it was in a it, it was in a um, antique shop. And I thought it was really neat. Well, I, when I rolled it over like this, I could see it had a place where you can put in batteries. So when you flick this light on, you can see, you know, it has working headlights. It has working running lights. And I thought it was kind of neat. And I think I paid um, like $11 for this. But it's from somewhere around 1960. But it's in really good shape. It's not missing anything. All the lights work on it. It has running lights in the front and the back and headlights in the front. And it's in pretty good shape. The next two things I got here. These are Renwalls. They're bigger. Um, bigger than the smaller sedan and the coupe I showed you. And, and these are actually, they look like they're pretty new, but they're not. Actually, they're from mid-1950. And they're kind of collectible. The nice part is these doors open. They're suicide doors, which are kind of cool. And this is a gasoline tanker. I don't know if you can see inside here or not, but there's a little plastic guy in there. Um, they're supposed to come with a plastic guy, but some are missing. Um, you can see in the back, there's a non-spigot, and the door's missing. I mean, I got a really good deal on it, but it's in really good shape. And they're kind of collectible to the right people that collect plastics. But I just like I like this one a lot. And then I had a chance to buy this other one. This is from mid-1950s, and the handle's missing and a little guy on the inside. But then, it, you know, it's in good shape. It says coal and coke on the side of it, you know, coal truck. But that's from the mid-1950s, and it's in pretty good shape. The next thing I got here is this is a 1970s, they call it the Power Bug, and it's made by a company named Amloid Toy Company. And uh, I was trying to get some information on that, but I couldn't find a lot about it. But I figured it, figured out this one was from up in the mid-1970s. And I got this real cheap. Um, I got this at a, another flea market. I think it was sitting on the in a pile of toys, and I think I paid like $3, $4 for it. But it's in pretty good shape. It's, it's from the mid-1970s. This next one's just a small truck. Um, it's from it's missing its trailer. It's a car transport, and I found that in the box of stuff. But you can see it's got the. It's from the mid 1950s. It's got from a place called Allied Molding Corporation, and it has a car hauler with it. But I don't have the car hauler part. But I I just plucked it out of there because I kind of thought it was a neat little car, not worth a lot of money, but but neat to look at. Nice to put in, put in with your smalls. This other truck I have here, this is the mid-1950s, and I couldn't find any information. I had the original box on it, and it says it's the stake truck with the detachable stakes, but it doesn't have the stakes anymore. But I think I picked that up for a dollar in a bin of toys at an um, antique shop, and it actually has the you look, it actually has the original box, but it doesn't seem to have any markings telling you where it came from. It just says on the box that it has a transparent windshield and head and tail lights on it, but I just don't have a stake, stake stuff for it. But I think I only paid like a couple dollars for this, which I thought was kind of cool. It still had the same box. Chances of finding the stakes are probably impossible, but... I've only got a few of these... And I'll show you these together. And these are, um, they're marks. And they're big. They're like five, six inches tall. And they're uh, marks from the early um, 
1960, late 50s, early 1960s, and I just, I got them in a box of stuff, and it's not really what I collect as far as things to collect, but I just thought they were nice and old, so I kind of put them in a display. They're, but they're made from marks, and they're in pretty good shape. This next thing I got is a 1960s, you're going to like this, it's a 1960s mark fighter jet and it's actually a plastic but it's actually a friction a friction car also when you lay it down if you can see inside of here that tumbles and makes sparks and it shoots sparks out the end of it and I got this at an antique shop because it's in just great shape I mean it's like the plastic point on here how what's the chances of that ever surviving and uh, it's in really good shape I looked them up online. I think I paid uh, around 20 some dollars for this, but I really wanted it because it, it's a really cool looking toy. And uh, this is about the time when, you know, Sputnik and all that stuff was going on and space toys and everything was the big rage. So I got a chance to get it. And then this is, like I said, this is in the early 60s. And it seems to work. It doesn't spark anymore, but it's a really nice display piece. <clears throat> The next thing I got here is this came out of a place that it's from a company called Remco and they made a lot of toys a lot of neat toys and this is a space they call it the space jeep and it says Hamilton's invaders here and it came in a place that there's a couple other vehicles and there's and there's a like some aliens and stuff like that and what's nice about this one is it pops up and there's a guy on the inside of it and the original person's in there and I got this really cheap I couldn't believe what I got this for it was like three or four dollars well when I looked them up online um some of them are going for fifty sixty dollars you know and if you have the other pieces you know it means the set's a lot worth a lot more but I've only got one piece of it and I just thought it was cool like like I said a lot of times when I buy this stuff it's because it's what I like I mean, it might not, you know, appeal to other people that collect, but I like plastics, too. Next thing I got is this is a 1960 plastic fire engine. Um, no markings on it to tell me where, what it is or what company made it. And uh, the nice part is it's still got the fire fighter guy in there. And the ladder comes up, you know, and extends out. Which is kind of nice. Everything works on it. Um, I think I got this for three or four dollars out of a bin somewhere. I'm thinking an antique shop or a flea market. I'm, I'm not really sure. After a while, this stuff just kind of all runs together. But um, I think I paid somewhere around three or four dollars for this, and I just thought it was cool because, like I said, it still has a it still has a firefighter. He's missing his steering wheel. But like I said, all my stuff isn't perfect. But it's all displayable stuff, you know, as long as it displays nice, that's that's all I really care about. Another one I got here, this is a 1960s process plastics. Um, they made a lot of things, trucks, Corvettes, um, all different kinds of plastic cars. This is a... This is either a Corvair station wagon or it's a Skylark station wagon. I can't really tell, it doesn't say, but... It, it did say um, Bear Lake Lodge on it. it. had stickers on it. The ones I did find it still have stickers on it. Not worth a whole lot. I think I paid a couple dollars for it at a yard sale. But otherwise, it's in pretty good shape. Uh, it doesn't seem to be broken or messed up at all or anything. And I just kind of thought it was a neat car. This next one I got... Is made by a company called Peyton. And to look at this truck that I'm going to show you here, it looks like it's pretty new. And to look at it, you'd think, oh, that's not even old. It's shiny. It doesn't have any scars on it. And it's big. It's probably it's probably 11 inches long. It's a pretty big. It's a pretty big truck. But my wife had purchased this for me offline. And uh when she gave it to me, I, I thought, wow, it looks pretty new. But it was in a bag, a bag that was so deteriorated that you couldn't even see into the bag. 
And what was on the bag was this tag. And it says the toy, it says the toy house on it. But if you look in the corner here, it says, um, it says advertised that to Life Magazine. And if you look on the back of this tag, it said this company started up in 1947 in Minnesota. And this truck is like in the mid 50s, but it is like brand new. Like I said, you couldn't even see inside the bag when my wife got it. But it was new old stock. It was still in the bag, but the bag was pretty ate up. So I just got rid of the bag and kept the tag so people could see that it wasn't new. But this is from like the mid 1950s. And it's in pretty good shape. Next thing I got here is this guy here. And I don't usually collect horses or anything, but this guy was kind of neat. It's a Royal Canadian Mounted Police guy. Um, he's in pretty good shape. He's not all... Oh, let me get away from the camera. Um, he's in pretty good shape. He's not all banged up or anything. Um, not worth a lot of money by, by much, but I just kind of thought it was neat because it was plastic, so I just decided to put it in my display case. He's got very little paint loss. I looked them up online. They're not they're not going for very much. They're not worth a whole lot. But like I said, I don't collect toys for the money value of it. I just collect for the pure enjoyment of having them around. Okay, this other car I got. I just got this not too long ago off that online auction I'm on all the time. Um it's a 57 Chevy Bel Air hot rod, and it's made by Process Plastics. And i, I got to move it away from the camera here a little bit because it is pretty big. It's like 12, 14 inches long, but it's in really good shape. From the mid-70s, um, still has retaining all its stickers. It's in pretty good shape. It has very few scars on it. I don't know how much it was played with, but it's, it's in overall pretty good shape. And I got a real good deal on this. I think I got it offline for 7 or $8. I don't know why nobody was interested in it, but I just thought it was cool. and It would be nice in my display collection, so that's why I picked it up. This next thing I got is I got it off an online auction, and it... uh. I liked it because it was in a box of other toys, and the other toys were, were nothing to spectacular, nothing to write home about. But this is actually a Tootsie, 1970s Tootsie dirt bike. And Tootsie was in, in business for a long time, from 1920 to 1990. And I have a lot of Tootsie cars, which I'll show you in other videos. But I just thought this dirt bike was pretty cool. Um, I'd never seen one like it before. When I started cleaning up the wheels and cleaning it up, it says Tootsie toy company on it and Tootsie's made things like I said from the 1920s actually they were in business about 1890 but they weren't making um, toys they were making those little pieces that went in Monopoly sets and they were making castings for different things but I, I think I got the whole box for $12 and there was some stuff in there um, I can't remember which video it was in but I showed you a Tonka forklift and that was actually in the box with this dirt bike but I just wanted the dirt bike so I, I, I won the auction on it, but I just kind of thought it was neat. The next thing I got is, it's not old, and uh, I got it on an online auction. Um, the only reason that I bought it was in uh, 90 through 93, I used to work for this company, at Schwann's Ice Cream. Everybody probably knows about Schwann's are in all 50 states, including Hawaii and Alaska. But I thought it was really cool because at the time when I was working for this company, um, this was the kind of truck that I had. And I rolled it over to see that it had batteries and it has, it has working lights on it too. It has headlights and running lights. And this thing looks exactly like the one that I used to have. So I got it off on an online auction. I paid a little bit more than I probably should have paid for it, but... I just wanted it in my collection because I used to run one just like it. It's a GMC Topkick. Not worth a lot of money. 
but these were not distributed to the public. This would have been, it's a bank, but it would have been a, a prize for whoever was working at Schwann's Ice Cream at that time. It would have been for winning some kind of contest or something, So, and they weren't distributed amongst the public. So there's not very many of them. The next thing I have here is this is a 1970s. I'm thinking it's late 60s, early 70s because it's a Lumar Marks 155 millimeter howitzer. And the thing is it come in a play set and there's a truck that actually pulls this, but I just don't have the truck. And you could cock this thing and it could fire something out of the end of it. I'm assuming some kind of darts or something. But uh, I got a real good deal on this. I think I paid $3 for it. It was at a flea market laying on a table. And the guy says, how about $3? And well, when I started to look a little closer, I see it says Lumar on it, which is basically Mark's. And I thought, well, that seems to be a great deal for $3. Because when I looked down the line, they're going for about $25. But if you have the truck, the truck's worth a lot more money. I think the truck runs upwards of about $100. But I'll eventually get a truck to pull it behind. But I just thought it was kind of cool, and I got a real good deal on it. This other thing I have here is I have no idea who made it. And it's pretty big, as you can see in the picture here, compared to everything that's on this table. You know, I've seen a lot of little little BMX bikes like this, and I bought this at a yard sale. It was sitting on a table, and I walked up to the gal, and I asked her, hey, how much are you asking for that? And she says, how about three bucks? And I thought, you know, I couldn't pass it up. It's pretty much all complete. Nothing's broken off it. I'm assuming it's from somewhere around the 1970s if I had to take a guess. But I'd just never seen anything like it before, so I thought I'd pick it up. You know, three, you, can't miss, you can't beat it for $3. The last thing I have here, I'll try to get in the camera a little bit better. This is from the late 50s, early 1960s, and I'll have to stretch it out here so I can get it into the picture, but it's a uh, um, number 700 touring sedan, and the company that made it's called is Andy Guard, which is a toy company. And the cool thing about this, this sedan is that it's like a play set. It comes with some tools with it. It has a jack and a and a wrench and a little hammer and you can you can change the wheels on this you can take the wheels off it and the nice part of it this top top is cloth so you can fold it up and, and fold it back to make it a convertible which is kind of cool and the thing with this is I got it at an antique shop and I'm I'm walking through there and everything was just priced through the roof and I see this sitting there on the shelf and it's in the original box And I'm thinking, yep, this thing's got to be expensive. It's big. It's probably 25 inches long. And here's the original box that it came in. And it says, unbreakable. It says, folding fabric top, handy tools, removable tires and wheels. And it's from General Molds and Plastic Corporation. Pennsylvania but this is the original box that it came in which is really cool and you can tell that it's old and when I rolled over the box it said $20 on it so when I went online when I got home I couldn't pass it up for $20 because it's big and I like big stuff and uh, when I got back home they're going for $75, $85, $95 online so I got a really good deal on it like I said you get really good deals on stuff once in a while and that's about it for all the stuff that I have on this table. Um, like I said, I'll bring you in more videos. I got a lot more stuff. Um, like I said, I, I never brag about my stuff because it pales in comparison to most people's collection. But I really like some of the stuff that I got. And like I said, I only collect because I like it. But if you like it, um, subscribe or hit like. Or a comment if you want. I'm always up for comments. If, if something I've showed you here isn't what it really is supposed to be, 
um, comment about it or we can talk about other things that you want to talk about as far as toys because like I said I love toys so I could talk about this stuff forever but this is Bruce from Bruce's Antique Toy Corner and uh, we'll see you guys next time.